when you launched the Wolfram Physics Project, you ended the announcement with the words, so let's all go and try to find the fundamental theory of physics. It's going to be great. So in that spirit, let's try to find the fundamental theory in the rest of this conversation. Let's have a blast. I think the best way to approach this conversation is first to set the foundation and define some of the terms that we will be using. So let's start with one of the most foundational terms. And I think we can rattle them off quickly because you've already alluded to a lot of these terms already, but let's formalize all the terms and then we can start talking about the fundamental theory. So first let's start with what is computation? What are rules? Actually, those aren't such easy questions to answer. <laughs> I think the, the uh, uh, you know, computation one can think of as the following of definite rules. And what are rules? Well, you know, you, you kind of are, are specifying some system and saying this is how something should happen in the system. So, you know, there are many ways to represent rules, whether it's little programs, whether it's, oh, I have this uh, string of, of black and white cells, I have this sequence of, of uh characters, whatever, there are many ways to say, oh, if you have, you know, uh, you know, one, one, zero or something, then make it a zero on the next step. That's an example of a kind of rule. Yeah. But that's kind of the the notion of rules are kind of that is the that's the raw material for specifying how things happen. That's the kind of the lowest level representation of sort of how things will happen. Now, you know, this leads one quickly on to the notion of time. Because in a sense, the progress, the, the application of rules, the progress of computation is the story of the passage of time. That's, and that's something which has been somewhat obscured in traditional mathematical physics because one sort of says, well, time is just a, a coordinate and we can pick now or we can pick a million years from now and it's all kind of the same thing. Yeah. In, in this kind of computational view of, of the world, time is this progression of computation. And one of the big results that's now just 40, 40 years and four days old, I suppose, is this uh, notion of computational irreducibility. Mm -hmm. um, that is, if you just are applying these rules, can you figure out what's going to happen? Let's say you want to know what's going to happen after a billion applications of these rules. Yeah. Is there a way to figure that out that is more efficient than just following those billion rule applications and seeing what happens? Mm -hmm. The whole point is that there are many situations in which there is computational irreducibility, that there's no way to figure out what will happen much more efficiently than just by following every step and seeing what happens. Yeah. And that's, that's a very important idea, but that's also the idea that makes the passage of time in some sense meaningful. Because if we could just jump to the end immediately, yeah. it's like, why did we go through and, and live those years? We might just have gone and, and uh, uh, you know, jumped to the end and known that the answer was 37 or something. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, so that, that's, you know, that, that's, that's kind of the beginning of, of the story of uh, uh, kind of computation as well as sort of, you know, is there a way to describe sort of at a fundamental level how things operate? Well, that's something you do in terms by specifying kind of by having certain rules by which it operates. Yeah. If there are not rules by which something operates, then you might not be able to say anything about how it operates. Yeah. But this is saying there, there, is some, there is some underlying uh, structure to what's happening. We describe that in terms of rules. We describe the operation of those rules as computation. We describe kind of the, the progression of computation turns out to be what we think of as time. So the application of rules is computation. Progression of these, ru progression of these computation of these rules is the progression of time. And then you also brought up computational irreducibility, which I... I guess it's similar to Gödel's incompleteness theorem. There is just some things you just cannot prove. You just get, can't get the input from the output or the other way around. You have to follow. Right. I mean, computational irreducibility is a finer grained version related to Gödel's theorem. Gödel's theorem. I mean, the, okay. the, the, the fact that it happens that way is that they're, they're interwoven, but Gödel's theorem is a somewhat more technical kind of thing that really relates to axiom systems and mathematics and so on. Yeah. I mean, the... What, what is behind both of these things, what's behind both of them is what I call the principle of computational equivalence, which is this question of if you have these different systems and they're all doing different kinds of computations. Yeah. The question is, are those computations in some sense equivalent? Or is it the case that when you have these really simple rules that they, have, they are corresponding to a much simpler computation than these other rules over here? Yeah. And so in particular, you know, our brains, our computers, our mathematics those are implementing certain kinds of rules. The question is, are the computations that those produce 
somehow fundamentally more sophisticated than the computations that happen in some simple computational system, some simple system in nature, whatever else. Yeah. And the big point about the principle of computational equivalence is no, they're all equivalent. And so that leads to computational irreducibility because in a sense, what one is doing when one is trying to predict something is one's competing. The predictor has is doing certain computation. The system they're predicting is doing certain computation. Yeah. Can the predictor system be so much smarter than the system it's predicting that it can jump ahead and see what happens? Yeah. And the whole point of principle of computational equivalence is no, you can't expect that to be the case. And, uh, uh, and that's what leads to computational irreducibility. 